What's going on guys? It's Bromley and Empire Barbell. No whiteboard today. Today I figured I'd take you guys through a full squat workout since it's one of my early weeks in the first wave of a base phase that I'm in in preparation for Clash on the Coast on Tybee Island in Georgia. That's going down in a few months. I got about 15 or so weeks of prep. So this is the introductory phase. I haven't squatted seriously in about five months. I stopped about two months before nationals. Nationals was three months ago. So I'm in the process of rebuilding my squat. So we're gonna start with me as an old man. My joints are stiff. I don't have the greatest range of motion. Part of that's my fault, it's lack of self care. So I really gotta take my time getting my hips, knees and ankles warmed up so that I don't get put into a weird position when I start squatting. Cossack squats and Kang squats are some of my favorites to get loosened up. I like to spend a lot of time stretching my hamstrings because it helps me get into a, a better, deeper squat position. I have short legs and then I'm kind of bound through my glutes and, and actually my ankle flexibility isn't that great since I broke my ankle a few years ago. So I get really bound and I end up relying a lot on artificial compression and that's not the greatest. So I do stretch quite a bit. I mash out my glutes quite a bit. That keeps me from getting a back bump, getting forced into a weird position. I'm a big advocate of stretching. I've said this before, there is not an epidemic of people who are too flexible. There is an epidemic of lifters who don't practice self maintenance and get a bunch of overuse issues because they can't get into a good position. Part of being useful is being able to get into a wide variety of positions safely and you can't do that if you don't practice any self maintenance. So I had to wait until I was too dysfunctional to come back. So you see, after I stretch a little bit, after I mash out my glutes, my caustic squats get a little bit better. Now, ideally you're not gonna go into a full deep stretch for a few minutes right before you lift, but it's better than not. I'm not going to do like a three minute uh, hamstring stretch before a max effort squat, but I'm not engaging in max effort work. So this is part of my regular uh, preparation. You know, it's okay to stretch. It's okay to loosen up before your weight training. You will not lose all of your power. Like I said, it's not ideal before you max out, but most of your training shouldn't be maximal anyways. So take it from me, somebody who got very broken before I had to start implementing it. Warming up, stretching, it's all good stuff. So my squatting protocol, this is a base building cycle, which means I'm uh, doing a lot of broad work. I'm building capacity because of some of my issues. Normally I'd be doing higher reps right now, but I get a bad back pump pretty quickly because of the state of my glutes. My glutes being tight forced me into a weird position and my erectors end up taking on a lot of loads. Not good. So I went back to just triples and I'm just focusing on working in a very small range of between 455 and 495 on my top sets. And I'm just trying to do more work, slowly ratchet up the average intensity and keep the bar speed high. And I'm going to do that for a few waves and then you know, reset the volume and build back up in a higher, uh, higher intensity range. Now I have to get my knees prepped. So I have these heating pads I throw in the microwave. I put on some horse liniment under my knees. Um, I think I'm using Equablock and you have to get heat on it to activate it. So you can see how red my kneecaps were right there. But that goes a long way to help it out with the tendonitis I have in my kneecaps. It gets blood flow in there. I'm hoping it'll actually be a long-term therapeutic method to help get some blood flow to get those tendons thicker. And then I throw on a light wrap. These are about 10 year old Inza wraps. I put them on very light. I actually keep this wrap on the entire workout. I like it just because they're easy to get on and off. I hate sleeves because they're a pain in the ass. These keep my knees warm and it's a little bit of a, um, a psychosomatic thing. I feel the pressure on my knees and it gives me a little bit more confidence. This isn't giving me a ton of pop. This is on par. I'd say this is a little less than what a tight pair of SPD knee sleeves will give you. So it's just a little bit of confidence, but I'm a wrap squatter. As I get heavier, I'm going to get my competitive wraps on. I'm going to start cranking them down. That's just how I squat. If I ever go into a contest, I'm going to wrap. Wrapping has been around since powerlifting has been around. So the idea of a sleeve only division, I find offensive and unnecessary. I put on a light wrap and the wrap will get progressively tighter and more heavy duty as I get into heavier weights. Once I'm over 550 or so, I'll start wrapping up a little bit tighter. But I also find that gives me some immediate overload. So they're, they're, the wraps are very specific. So once you start getting good and tighter and tighter wraps, you notice that you time it better, you get more out of them. And then suddenly the weight's uh, ramping up. So you have to support more weight. You have to move under a heavier load. Your hips get stronger to compensate. So specifically for strongman, it, I actually see a lot of carryover once my wrap squat starts going up. Now, squatting to depth, I think is important for staying well-rounded, but 
the bottom position of a squat is really just specific to improving the bottom position of a squat. So it's, it's important, I think, to be well-rounded, to be good at the bottom of a squat. Uh, I don't think it's the most important uh, point of squatting when it comes to specificity, even in strongman, when you're at the, the rock bottom position, when you're getting a stone or a sandbag in your lap, you don't actually put force onto the object until you're in an above parallel position. You know, your hips rise up a bit before you extend into a stone or a sandbag. I'm not too worried about the stress um, of having the wraps on my knees as far as it helping because it's not specific to what I do anyways. And like I said, I'm always going to wrap when I go into a meet. So my last workout uh, was 455 for a triple, a triple at 495, and then two more triples at 455. So today, all I was trying to do was be a little more confident, a little faster, and do a few more sets at 455. Base building is very relative. Um, it does, there's no concrete recommendation for so many sets or so many reps or what percentage range you're working in. It is really dependent on the individual. And because I'm doing low reps, because of the issues I'm going through, it actually works in my favor. I can keep the reps low, work in, this is about the same as about uh, the 78 to 80% range I'm working in. And by doing triples and just doing more and more and more, by slowly ratcheting up the volume, slowly ratcheting up the average intensity, by doing more of my sets at a higher range, then I am, I'm moving the goalposts, I'm moving the chains. So it's still an effective way of increasing volume. It's still an effective way of increasing stress week to week. It's just a slightly different lean. So once I get into a peak phase, it's going to be less sets, uh, more difficult efforts. None of these sets were really that hard. Um, and then I can train more specifically towards top end strength. And like I said, that's what I'm going to get some tighter wraps on. Now, this is the only back off set I did today. I did an extra set today and more of them were at the heavier weight than last week. So my volume was about 2000 pounds higher, went from around 5,000 to 7,000 and my average intensity went up 15 or 20 pounds. Uh, and you see how fast these move relative to the first sets. And that's why I like it. It's PAP post activation potentiation. When you do a back off set, uh, after your heavier sets, it just moves better. So it's a good way to get confident and dial in speed. Um, and then I move into front squats. Now I like front squats. I'm good at them. I've done them a lot for most of my developmental years. So what I find is that when my back squat gets good, my front squat stays good. Now I haven't been this heavy for this much volume and I especially haven't done front squats with a lot of difficulty or with a lot of volume, I guess, after a bunch of squatting. So I'm a little more fatigued here, especially as the two event days per week are starting to catch up with me because I have a lot of events to prep for. So even here, I'm starting to feel my upper back go a little bit, which is very rare for me. My best front squat is 500 for a triple. I was a little bit heavier then, and I was at the end of a peak. So I'm just starting out right now. Like I said, it's been about four or five months since I've been squatting seriously. It's moving well. My positioning's okay. I have a lot of confidence in my leg drive. But considering this is one of my pet uh, pet lifts that I've historically been very good at, I'm quite a ways away from where I was. Now there's a car deadlift in the show I'm getting ready for. If it is side handle deadlift, which I'm keeping my fingers crossed it is because I'm a little bit better at that, front squats carry over hugely because side handle picks are much more of a squat than they are a deadlift. You start basically the bottom position of the front squat is about where I start on a car deadlift. People that try to deadlift side handle uh, deadlifts usually have a really hard time about it. So now we're getting into the fluff. Um, and these are the things I've neglected for a lot of years. I'm really trying to make a point to do all of the accessories and take them seriously. Step ups, I like them on paper. I've never drilled them long enough to realize a lot of the benefits because I'll do them for a week or two and then give up. So I'm making sure that this is gonna be a staple for at least the next two waves, the next six weeks. Uh, it's unilateral, which addresses some issues. I have short legs, which makes squatting very efficient, very easy. But because of that, my adductors have never had to work a lot. I have a huge strength discrepancy between my glutes and my adductors for that reason. So unilateral work is something I should be doing to try to keep the stabilization good in my hip, to try and address weaknesses. I'm a very, I'm a very lopsided human being. You can probably see from some of these angles that I am not very symmetrical uh, between my hips, my shoulders. So unilateral work is it's a good way to round yourself out, to show those weaknesses so I don't keep getting stronger in the context of dysfunction. Now, as I'm doing these step ups, I'm trying to find that purchase through my toes and heel so I can kind of grab into the, to the box. I'm really trying not to drive off my down leg 
and I'm also trying to accelerate the whole way up instead of coasting. So it doesn't look like I'm moving very fast, but I'm trying to really accelerate through, not just coast through the entire rep and get some, some pop at the top. And I'm hoping that I get some good carryover from that to some of the more athletic events in, uh, in Strongman. And then I finish off with some token upper back work. Uh, I'm training five days a week. I have a squat, overhead press, deadlift, and then two event days. That's the split I'm running. And they are all very intensive on the upper back, so I'm not killing myself. I'm doing lat pull downs after the, the beating my upper back takes, squatting and doing front squats. My lats, uh, my rhomboids, even my erectors, they're primed. So getting some rowing is uh, it's a good idea. It works out pretty well to get some rowing movements in. So I'll do lap pulls today. On my deadlift day, I'll do some bent rows. God, you can see how lopsided I am right here. I didn't even realize how bad that was. You can see my left elbow comes about two inches lower than my other one. And that's I think that's because of my left elbow, that's a torn bicep. So you can even see in the shape of it that, uh, that my right bicep is a little fuller. So I have to address that and that'll probably solve some shoulder issues. And that's about it. I just progress these linearly with each wave and then reset uh, to recover. And as the numbers go up, my back gets stronger. Everything kind of feeds into everything else and that's about it. So that is my squat workout. I'm going to focus on uh, increasing volume into next week. That'll be my fourth week and then I'll reset. I will drop the volume back down and build back up in a higher percentage range. And I'm just going to repeat that cycle. It's it's almost like step loading. That's kind of the idea, except I do add weight when I feel good for it. So I'm not really confined into that. So that's my workout for today. I will probably cut some more videos of my workouts uh, in the future. Um, I'm overhead pressing tomorrow. We'll see if I get some of that out. Uh, so you guys can get an idea of how I move things forward. And hopefully in about two months, you see how this pays off when I do go through the peak phase. And when I do start doing heavier, more singularly intense efforts. So thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, this is Bromley at Empire Barbell. I'll see you.